guys, it's Will. It's Hong Kong Cinema Appreciation Society. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you for finding me. If you are new to the channel, subscribe, like, all that fun stuff. I hope you like my Shaolin Monk look. It's the new thing I'm rocking. Let me know in the comments how you feel about it. Before I get into this video, I just want to tell you it is exceedingly bright right now in this room that I am in. And so if I'm like squinting or like moving in weird ways, the sun is like right there. Um, so today I'm here to talk about Maximum Risk. Jean-Claude Van Damme, this film was directed by Ringo Lam, who was a Hong Kong filmmaker. So people on this channel really like Ringo Lam, and obviously this, or uh, Van Damme rather, and obviously this channel is about Hong Kong cinema, so, you know, the Ringo Lam fits perfectly in with the channel. So I will be, this is the, the 88 Films Blu-ray release. I'm going to be doing like a, kind of a movie review slash um, uh, Blu-ray review, the same way I did with the Universal Soldier release from 88 Films. Uh, Universal Soldier, The Return, not the original film. So this is a, uh, a limited, limited to 3,000, I believe, um, first run of this release with the slip cover. It's numbered, so I got number 2685. And all these Van Damme releases are in, like, this foil kind of laminated slipcase, which I think is super cool, although it's very reflective, so it's not perfect for videos, but it is super cool to have. And then it pops open, and you have the artwork here. And there you go. And uh, I'm, I guess probably what I'll do is I'll do the Blu-ray review first, kind of. So if you've already seen this movie, you don't need to hear me talk about it. And um, and you can kind of just get a, an idea of what the what the, this release offers, and then you can be on your way if that's what you're here for. And then I will talk more in depth about the film itself. So uh, there's a poster in here. The movie looks great. It looks really, really good. I've never seen this movie look this good before. I'm, I'm assuming this has been released somewhere on the world in the world on Blu-ray. I have seen at some point, I believe, um, like a, a decent release of this movie. Uh, I don't know whether or not it was HD. It looked okay, but it wasn't like stellar. This looks like really fantastic, and like you can really see the. Um, the kind of the textures and the focus and the kind of claustrophobia and like all those things that you associate with Ringo Lamb's visual style comes through really, really well in the um, in that release. And then here's a little booklet with uh, an article um, or an essay, I should say, by James Oliver. And so and the essay is called Wham Bam Thank You Van Dam. <laughs> Amen. What else do you need? Uh, so the essay is fun. The essay kind of like it talks about Van Dam as a performer and Van Dam kind of as he existed in relation to like Schwarzenegger and what differentiated him from Schwarzenegger and kind of like what the hallmarks of Van Dam films were leading up to Maximum Risk and how Maximum Risk differentiates and you know, it talks about the different Hong Kong filmmakers he worked with, you know, Choi Hark. Ringo Lam, uh, John Woo, and what each one kind of got out of him and how the movies differ and stuff like that. And um, where this movie kind of fits in the lineage of the collaborations between Van Damme and Ringo Lam. It was the first one they did together, but then they went on to do Replicant and In Hell and how those films all kind of like fit together and stuff like that. And then there is an audio commentary by Audi Sorley, who did audio commentary on other Van Damme releases from 88 Films. He did a commentary uh, along with Chris Ling. He's usually doing commentaries with Chris Ling. On this one, he's on his own. He did a, a commentary with Chris Ling on the Young Master release, which you can probably see behind me right here. And so Audi Sorley is like a Van Damme super fan. And so um, there's, there's a lot of cool stuff in the commentary. Like he talks about Van Damme's career and, you know, like all the tabloid stuff that was happening with Van Damme at this point in his career and how it was probably kind of detrimental to his box office. He talks about the three picture deal that Van Damme signed with Columbia and how that was part of that three picture deal and how they were kind of trying to transition Van Damme from being an 80s style big muscle action star to being a more 90s style versatile actor action star. Um, you know, which you've seen a lot of those 90s movies. You have people like Nick Cage, John Travolta, Tom Cruise, like people who are really more known for being actors than, than action people becoming action stars, right? And so maybe transitioning Van Damme into that kind of mold. All the different rewrites this script went through, all the people who rewrote it. Um, a little bit of analysis of the movie. It talks about Natasha Hendricks' career, or Van Damme's career, Ringo Lamb's career, the career of all the different kind of peripheral actors and supporting characters and stuff like that. Um, and so it's just, it's a fun, it's a fun commentary. Like obviously a super fan of the film. It's really fun to just hear him talk about it. He's European. I believe he's from Norway or somewhere in Scandinavia. Uh, there's a mention of Oslo and he says my home turf. So, um, I, my assumption was Norway, but maybe somewhere else in that part of the world. Um, 
And uh, so it's interesting to get that perspective, too, about how Van Tam's popularity was declining in the U.S., but that didn't really happen in Europe. And you, so you hear kind of like alternate perspectives like that. It's pretty cool for me as a, a U.S. You know, um, film buff. Kind of see the European perspective on it is pretty cool. So to talk about revisiting this movie, and I'm sorry if I'm talking really, really quickly, but I don't want this video to be like 20 minutes. And I'm trying to do two things in one video, which is a Blu-ray review and a movie review. So I want to kind of get through it. Um... It was really interesting revisiting this movie. I think I had only seen this once before, maybe twice. And um, this movie does not have a great reputation, I don't think, amongst Van Damme. Like, hardcore Van Damme fans really like this movie. Fans of more action cinema in general um, who might like, like, Bloodsport or Hard Target and not a lot of other Van Damme movies or haven't dug too deep into Van Damme. And I think, like, film critics and, and people who are not huge fans of more, like, mainstream, mindless action cinema, but maybe, like, thrillers and stuff or, like... You know, even big fans of like Ringo Lamb and John Woo, you know, who are maybe not necessarily Van Damme fans, do not think particularly highly of this film. And so in watching this movie, I was kind of trying to figure out why that is. Because, again, I made a list maybe a year or two ago with, with Mike of our favorite Van Damme movies, and I did not put this on this list. And if I made that list again... I would definitely put this movie on that list. And so as I was watching it, I was like, why Why do people keep this movie at arm's length? And what occurred to me is that when I watch Van Damme movies, typically I am watching them for entertainment. Like, they're just really fun. Double Impact, Hard Target, Bloodsport, Kickboxer, Lionheart, Time Cop. Like, these movies are fun as hell, right? This movie is not very fun in that, like silly kind of entertainment preposterous action film kind of way it's not a fun movie it, and it's not a pretty movie right and like movies like double impact um do a great job of having these huge vistas of like hong kong it's almost like a tourist perspective where you get to like and and uh blood sport does the same thing where it shows you something exotic and you're drawn in by that as a as a western viewer right and then uh movies like hard target have john woo's really incredible visual sense right ringo lamb does not make pretty movies he makes kind of ugly movies but not ugly like he's a bad filmmaker but like they're deliberately scuzzy and dirty and this movie is really really bleak and that never really occurred to me before because i wasn't watching it with my like reviewing hat on of like i'm gonna analyze this film and dig into this film and try to understand it right and there are a couple scenes in this movie that i think really kind of highlight thematically what Ringo Lamb is looking at here. This is a very existential film, right? It starts with like a classic thriller thing. You have an opening action sequence and there's a really great plot twist because Van Damme plays two characters. He plays twin brothers, right? And he dies in the opening scene. And so if you've never seen this movie, you're like, wait, Van Damme just died? So it's it's very clever, right? Um, because you, you throw the audience's expectations off. And then you see the other Van Damme character and he's at a funeral. And you're like, oh, he must have known him. He's at a funeral. It turns out somebody else's funeral. So there's like another twist, right? And then he sees this guy who looks exactly like him. And he's like, I don't know who that is. Like, you know, like another guy, he's a cop, Van Damme's character. Another cop comes and gets him and is like, who is this guy? And Van Damme's like, I don't know. And then you find a clue on the body. You find like a hotel name or something like that, right? And that's classic thriller writing because you have uh, opening sequence to engage the audience, which is kind of like the... Um, God, what do you call it like the uh there's like a screenwriting name for it that's not coming to me off the top of my it's like a hook basically it's like you get them in with the hook right then you cut to the main character and they're in an interesting situation and then you give the first clue and then the whole mystery kind of starts right the mystery here though is very existential because essentially you have twin brothers right and this guy didn't know he had a twin brother and so really he's even though the twin brother is a separate person it's really an investigation of the self Right. And, and people keep telling the Van Damme character, are you sure you want to do this? Are you sure you want to go down that road? Right. Because he has a relatively safe and secure life in France. He's a cop. It's a good job. It pays pretty well. He's in Nice, which is like a nice city in the south of France. It's not like the big metropolis. It's a beautiful place. And he's not really being challenged in like a, an existential way, in a very deep and brutal way. And by going down this rabbit hole, people keep telling him, you're going to uncover stuff you don't want to uncover. It's going to be a bleak and brutal journey. And in a way, I think that this is about the journey of self-discovery. And like, do you want to live an easy life 
Or do you want to live the hard life of really trying to understand the world and the self and society and the way that all those things fit together? And he decides to go down that path and there are not good things waiting for him there. And that's very, very Ringo Lamb to me of like people who confront the harshness and the brutality of the world rather than living in a comfortable life that allows them to, to isolate themselves from it. There's, there's no nice escape there. And so the, the two scenes that are very telling to me is I'm going to talk about the later scene first. It's the scene in the sauna. So eventually, the Van Damme character, Alan, who's the cop, meets the head of the kind of the Russian mob who his brother worked for, right? And that guy is the first person in this whole movie who is willing to help him. So he goes through hell to find this person who is like, yes, okay, we can find some kind of agreement here. I will tell you about your brother. We can help each other out and all this will be over, right? And that character, spoiler alert, he gets killed in that scene. So it's like there is, sorry, I put the arm of my chair up because it was irritating me. And now all of a sudden it's in the camera. Um, there's literally no escape for this character. There is no way out that does not involve the hardest possible path. Because the world that he has gone into is so brutal and violent and remorseless that he cannot, there's no way out of it other than to face it with its own language and to find brutality and remorselessness in himself and to inflict that upon the other people. And it's, it's really, really dark. And, and, and that sequence also has an incredible fight scene and an incredible chase scene that's like so classic Ringo Lamb. It reminds me kind of of City on Fire. Um, there's other parts of this movie that kind of remind me of Full Contact. You know, Full Contact is a really dark, violent, over-the-top, like completely insane movie where everyone is just like hateful and horny and insane and trying to kill people. And there's like strip clubs and like that like really seedy violent nihilistic world i see um, kind of reflected in this film it's a very similar world like this is not a nice world that the character goes into the other scene to me that really kind of reveals what ringo lamb is about is the scene where the alan character played by van damme ends up at mikhail is the the brother who dies in the beginning he ends up at mikhail's house and a couple things happen in this scene that are really interesting. One, he sees Natasha Hendridge's character naked. Now, Natasha Hendridge's character is the girlfriend of Mikhail, the brother. And you could very easily say that this scene is gratuitous nudity, and maybe it is. But if I'm reading too much into it, he, what he's doing is he's becoming his brother in a way. Because he's starting to gain access to his brother's private world which includes like the experience of, of seeing the girlfriend naked of the sexual experience of being with, and he ends up having sex with her eventually too. Right. And he, and so he's in, in that same scene, he puts on his brother's jacket cause he's looking for clothes, other clothes and his hair is starting to get kind of messy and he's got bruises on his face. And he's really starting to look like the brother character who we saw in the opening scene. And so I think that this is that this scene really speaks to the existential kind of transformation of the character where he's gone down the rabbit hole and he's becoming the other version of himself, which is the uglier version. But as everyone keeps warning him, you're not going to like what you find down there. He's really becoming another version of himself that he has kept buried or that he is kind of... It's almost like the multiverse thing of like, if you make one different decision, your entire life would be completely different. Who is this other person who you could be? And how is your identity defined? And how do you become who you are? And interestingly enough, these are very similar themes to Replicant which is another film directed by Ringo Lamb that stars Van Damme. And, uh, and so I just, I thought this stuff was really interesting. And in that same scene in Mikhail's house, Alan kind of loses his temper and he like, he beats the complete bloody crap out of two people, like breaks their limbs, smashes their heads in, like attempts to drown them, hits them in the head with glass, like, and you see a side of him that's previously when he was fighting, it was mostly about self-defense. And now it's becoming about aggressive brutality. He's becoming a, a different person. But, you know, he was in the military. He's like a military hero. Maybe this has always been in him. Maybe he did awful things to protect himself or his, you know, brothers in arms or whatever in the military. Like, we don't know enough about the character to know, but it seems like there's this really brutal darkness in him that other people recognize that maybe he doesn't. And other people are telling him, don't go there. And he goes there and it's not pretty what he finds. And so that to me is kind of like what this movie is about. There is one really classic trope of 90s screenwriting that drove me insane the whole time, which is the character of the cab driver. You know who I'm talking about if you've seen this movie. He like, 
Van Damme hires him as his cab driver in New York City, and he like he wants to be a like a crime novelist, and he's like asking Van Damme all these questions, and he's very chatty, and he's like the comedic relief. And interestingly enough, spoiler alert, in both the audio commentary and essay here, talk about this. That character gets killed not that far into his tenure in the film. And that's kind of a twist on the classic 90s thing. And I almost feel like throughout all the rewrites at some point, and again, maybe I'm reading too much into this, but it seems like a very Ringo Lamb thing to have like this character who seems like the comedic relief and seems like this kind of Hollywood, this is Ringo Lamb's first Hollywood movie, by the way. It feels like, it feels like this kind of Hollywood trope to lighten the mood of this dark film. And then that person, and Ringo Lamb's like, this killed that person. Let's like make it like a, almost like a meta device of like, this is not the movie you think it is. So that, those are my two cents on Maximum Risk upon revisiting. I really, really thought this was a very good, good movie. It's a really good thriller. It's a really good character study. Um, really, really strong visuals from Ringo Lamb, like I said, but again, not, it's not a pretty movie. It's a scuzzy, dirty, nihilistic, violent, brutal movie. The characters are not even likable in a lot of scenes, including the protagonist. Um, I did really like the fact that the Natasha Hendrich, Henstrich, I'm probably like butchering her name. It looks like Henstrich to me. I'm really sorry. I don't think I've ever heard it said out loud. Her character has a lot of agency, which I really like, because a lot of times in films from this era with female characters, they're kind of just there to like say, yes, male character, let me do what you want me to do. She says at various points throughout the movie, like, you almost got me killed. Does my life mean anything to you? Like, I am a person like allow me, I need to make my own decisions like I don't want to get sucked into this with you like she has a bit of she has some fight in her that I really appreciate it so Maximum Risk uh, 88 films released like I mean this is this is a top probably five or ten Van Damme movie for me so I you know I would rush out and buy this if I were you it's totally up to you whether or not you love the film but this is a region B release just to let you know um so uh, it'll play just fine in region B but in the U.S. or parts Elsewhere, you'll have to have a uh, multi-region player. My name is Will. This is Hong Kong Cinema Appreciation Society. I thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time. <laughs>